And we are so proud of your military service. Very proud. We all should be proud. Military families are special, you see. We are braver than we ever thought we could be. When we're far away, we count down each day. And make each day count every step of the way. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm Almost with you. you. Do, 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 do. We're in this together. Welcome to AUSA's Army Matters Podcast focusing on what's important to the total Army community. We bring vital Army conversations and interviews on issues relevant to soldiers, military families, and all of you amazing Army supporters. Rotating each week, our show includes Soldier Today, Leading Great Teams, Family Voices, and Thought Leaders. Let's tune into the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Thea Green, and welcome to today's episode of Army Matters. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, someone who gets the exclusive privilege to work every day with such luminaries as Elmo, Big Bird, Abby, Oscar the Grouch, and more. If only everyone was so lucky. Sabrina Huda is the senior manager at Sesame Workshop and in her role oversees the Sesame Street Military Families Program. It's an extremely important and useful resource that some of you or your children may have already used. I'm going to talk to her more about the program, some of the new things they're doing, and most importantly, some of her favorite experiences working with Elmo in the game. Welcome to the podcast, Sabrina. Thea, thank you so much for that warm welcome. I'm so glad to be here and talk to all of your AUSA family. I'm going to start off with the hard-hitting questions, so get ready for it. Who's your favorite Sesame Street character? <laughs> I always love that question. So when I first came here, it was always Elmo because, come on, who doesn't love Elmo? I mean, he's just the best. He's adorable. I think there's a little bit of Elmo in all of us. But, you know, as I really started to work on the different projects and really got into know the Muppets and, you know, each Muppet on our show, on the different initiatives, they have a story. They have their own bio. I really begun to really fall in love with actually Rosita. So Rosita is our bilingual monster. She is five years old. She um, came from Mexico with her family. She's so loving. She has big emotions. But what's really, really special about Rosita and her family is that her papi, Ricardo, was uh, injured in the military. So now he's in a wheelchair and we use their family to really model and talk about families and how caregiving families, how military and veteran families deal with both visible, but also those silent injuries. So I don't know, Rosita definitely has a special place in my heart. And I was also a caregiver for my mom. So I definitely relate to this work even as an adult. I like that answer. And I like Rosita too. Now, I've heard that you didn't actually watch Sesame Street as a child. How did you end up working with people there? I'd love to tell everyone a little bit of how I got to Sesame Street. It's been a long journey. I've been here, oh goodness, already over 10 years. And I've had such a pleasure on working on so many different initiatives. And, you know, I didn't grow up on Sesame Street, actually. I came to America when I had aged out. So I always love to share this story. I was in my living room couch watching, I'm sure it was on PBS, a documentary about Sesame around the world. And I was just blown away about the amazing work they were doing, particularly internationally. I didn't know that Sesame was in that space, and that really is what started my journey here. And I had a wonderful opportunity to work on many of our international initiatives. And then I transitioned over to our domestic department, where now I get to lead our amazing work with military and veteran families, along with some other really wonderful projects that we have in the pipeline. That is great. I mean, I love the story on Rosita. And for me, I actually did grow up watching Sesame Street and just listening to the Sesame Street theme song just brought that memories of sitting on the couch at my grandma's house and just watching with my grandmother. And as far as a as one specific Muppet, I actually loved all of them back growing up. 
But one, I know people may think this is a little crazy, but I did like Count Dracula. I love to watch him count and it helped me. And I think maybe he inspired me, you know, to love numbers. So who is your favorite Muppet to work with? Would it be Elmo or Rosita? <laughs> well, that's something I'll never tell. No, all of our Muppets are amazing as, you know, a secret to all of your audience. It's actually their puppeteers behind those Muppets. But I will have to say Elmo and Rosita are the Muppets we work with the most for our military initiative. Many people may not know this, but Elmo's family is actually in the National Guard. So we usually use Elmo and Louie when we're talking about things like deployments or temporary duty. I think we're so lucky because this initiative, Sesame Street for Military Families, is so close to so many of our hearts here at the workshop. You know, everyone knows about this work. It's been 15 years and counting. So everyone feels like it's such a pleasure and such a service to be able to do this work. And all the Muppets and puppeteers feel that way, too. I actually didn't know that Elmo was in the National Guard. I'm making a note of that so I can utilize that. Actually, Thea, that's something, you know, we just decided formally, you know, Elmo was always our go-to Muppet for um, talking about military service, especially with deployments and homecomings. But when we started this initiative back, goodness, 2006, post 9-11, Elmo lives on Sesame Street. So we weren't overt with saying that he was in the military because, you know, he also lives on Sesame Street. He's on the show. So we have to make sure that we're very parallel with the work that we do in our social impact department with also the bios of the characters. But it was decided among the team, actually, for our 15th year when we were launching new content around temporary duty that let's just formally say Elmo's in the military and, you know, we want to be representative, of course, of all branches. We chose National Guard because it was really highlighted for the temporary duty work. That was a really exciting kind of milestone for us as a company as well. I'm sure it must be incredible to do what you do on a daily basis. Are there any specific moments that stand out? Since I didn't get to grow up on it, I'd love to share with you my favorite day at Sesame Street. And like I said, I've been there for over a decade. And I'll never forget this because we were able to go to West Point because we were doing something what we call a mission shoot. We had this amazing shoot with military families, mostly Army. We also recruited a few Navy. And we had Elmo, Big Bird. We had Rosita and Grover. And it was really a magical two days because we got to see just the magic in children's eyes when they peeked around the corner and there was Big Bird. And I have to tell you, when even as an adult, I know that was my first time I think I took a picture with Elmo. You forget that there's a person behind the Muppet holding the Muppet, speaking for the Muppet, because you see the kids never see that. And you're like, oh, my goodness, that's so silly. But when you're in there and Elmo is looking into your eyes, you, you're also a little lost. And I remember experiencing that. And I remember my colleague snapped a picture of me experiencing that. So it was really, really priceless. It's very special that we get to do this and use them for this sort of work. I'm looking forward to meeting Elmo one day. So hopefully, um, I know Holly, my director, she had the opportunity to record with Elmo. I'm not sure when, but a few years back, she was able to record with Elmo. So, and I can imagine just standing there with Elmo, you, you do forget that, <laughs> you know, that there's a puppeteer or someone that's inside the um, costume. Now, I'm always learning new and different acronyms as we see a lot of the different acronyms, and our listeners may see SS4, the number four, MF, which stands for Sesame Street for Military Families. What is Sesame Street for Military Families, and can you tell us a little bit about how it got started? Of course. I'm so happy, Pia, you said that. SS for MF. We know how much the military loves acronyms, so we're like, let's join them. So SS for MF dot org is actually our website that hosts all of our wonderful free bilingual resources. It's short for Sesame Street for Military Families dot org. Very quick history. So as I had maybe noted before, this all started post 9-11. 
And I think there was an article that our CEO at that time saw that there were over 700,000 military children under the age of five with a parent deployed. And we just felt like this is a need. This is something we need to respond to, especially for young kids. So we really started with how can we really respond to this? We've partnered with the Department of Defense, Military One Source were our key partners back then. And we started rolling out content. We didn't have a website back then. It was really branded under an initiative called Talk, Listen, Connect that's really grown over the years. We put out resources on first deployment and then it was homecomings. And then, you know, what else was needed, right? Well, families coming home, service members coming home with injuries. So then we did an initiative on that. And then the tougher topics, such as when your service member isn't coming home, how do you talk to kids about grief? So this initiative has just grown over the years. And, you know, what we've really done well, I believe, is that we've always listened and learned from the families, right? Their insight has guided the creation of this work that's now evolved into SS for MF.org, Sesame Street for Military Families. And our goal is how do we continue to provide rich content here to make sure we're really meeting needs of the families that they need now, right, through their next milestone, through their journey. Right after this message, we will hear about the big milestone Sesame Street for Military Families hit. Did you know, as a member of AUSA, you have access to many benefits. From car rental to entertainment discounts, the opportunities are ample. Visit AUSA.org slash benefits to learn more. Welcome back. I'm here with Sabrina Huda of Sesame Street for Military Families. Now, Sabrina, can you tell me a bit more about other topics that you and the team cover in the program? You know, actually, the, we focus on everything. You know, like I mentioned, the big ones in the beginning were really around like the deployments, relocation, of course, knowing how many times families PCS. But I'd love to maybe spend a little time on some of our more recent topics, you know, because things have changed so much. Even right now, we were having this discussion, like, what does readiness look like for our military families today. It's so different, right? Deployments don't look like they did before. That's why we created a whole new topic area around temporary duty, because when parents were coming to our deployment page, they were saying, yeah, this is great. This has the strategies we need. But now people don't go for long time deployments. That may change again with recent events, but temporary duty assignments are very common and they last a few days to a few months and they happen much more quickly. Families don't have time to prepare. So how do we make sure that we help families stay connected when they're going long distance like that, prepare for the short term that could happen in a moment's notice? And then how do they reintegrate when they're back? So looking at the before the assignment, during and after. And we created a new suite of videos with Elmo and his dad to talk just about that before Elmo's dad goes away and then how they stay connected during and then how they reconnect back. You know, when you think about little kids at this age, you know, their caregivers are everything for them, their parents. What we hear from military families particularly is that when that parent is away, it, it becomes a significant loss for a child. And children have big feelings, you know, even if it's a few days, a small amount of time, that's huge for a child. So for the caregiver that's away, how do we get give them some strategies, right? Like making sure how they can stay connected, how they can keep a little diary so that when they get reconnected, they can share with their child what they've been up to. And then for the parent that's with the child, you know, reassuring that child that they're always loved, they're safe and cared for, and that it's okay to have those big feelings and that mommy or daddy will be back soon. And then when they're back together, they can, you know, catch up, share their journals of what they missed while they were away for both of them and reconnect that way. So that's how we really try to be relevant with a topic like temporary duty. Have you had the opportunity to meet or hear from some of the children that use these resources? And if yes, what have they told you? You know, Thea, that's a great question. I'm going to butcher this quote, but it was a family who was through a program, through one of our partners, using our resources around caregiving. So that was when the family was providing care for an injured veteran. 
and how this parent was like, thank you so much because your resources with Rosita actually helped me explain to like my child, you know, how to talk about this. So it's really also a lot of reactions, quotes that we hear from the parents, which is so important and so valuable because, you know, our resources are, of course, for the kiddos, but they're really all of our stuff is for adults because we don't want a three year old <laughs> streaming the website <laughs> looking for stuff. It's more like the parents can find it and it's they co watch the video, right? And then we put talking points like after you watch this video, here are some things that you can have a discussion or maybe the video helps open or start the discussion with your child. Like this is happening to Elmo. Oh my God, that's how I feel right now. Right. And how can the parents then support the child? Different people absorb information in different ways. Some kids like video. Some people want to do printables. We did this great printable that it's those adult child coloring pages. So it's this beautiful printable of let's say like big bird for the child to color and then all around the page is these tiny little feathers for the parent to color so it's a co-coloring activity because sometimes we have big feelings and we just don't want to say anything but let's do an activity quietly together sometimes you just need a moment to reset and you don't want to talk and we want to make sure our families feel like they have resources to do just that as well I love that. I love to color and you're right. So maybe I, that's something that I can utilize and share on our tables where it's actually a family photo. We have Big Bird and then there's something for mom and dad. Everyone can just join in. But I can let you know that our AUSA chapters, they love the activity books. I get requests all the time. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that your chapters really enjoy those books. They were made with such heart. And it's, again, to take all of the work that we do with videos online, but then have this really printed keepsake book for kids to take with them. So I love hearing that. Those are also just for all your listeners to know, you know, we we provide those sort of books for free to all of our families. It's usually through a provider organization because they can order them in bulk for an event, for an activity, or for a program, and then that's how we get it out to the families. As you know, April is the month of the military child, and as we celebrate, Sesame Street for Military Families just hit a big milestone. Sabrina, tell us all about this milestone. Thank you, Thea. It really is exciting. We are so humbled to say we've been serving military families for 15 years. This initiative that we've been able to do to support families, to listen to families. It's such a key initiative to the whole company, to our department, so meaningful. And, you know, we just also love that how it's developed over the years and more so because of partners like AUSA and other on the ground partners who really helped us to understand what families need in the time that they need. So how do we stay continually relevant, meeting the needs as they're happening and recognize, you know, what as they're evolving, you know, so because we're learning every day, especially now in the world that's ever changing, what families may need now is not what they needed back then. On a more celebratory note, you know, we've been really celebrating this milestone on social all year. We kicked off, I think, last September, which was kind of like when we first launched our first initiative 15 years ago. And especially with Month of the Military Child, we're so excited. That's always a huge month for us. It's just a really reflective, happy time for us to be able to do this work. Well, I just want to say happy 15-year anniversary. If I could do fireworks on podcasts, they would be going off right now. (laughs) We're so happy to be able to celebrate with you, just getting the word out on all of your resources. Tell us how you determine the specific resources and initiatives that you use. Yeah, of course. So, you know, as I mentioned, you know, really the resources we create is really based on what we're hearing. Sometimes it's anecdotal. Sometimes when we see that there's a huge need from families. But I think one of the reasons Sesame's also survived the company's over 50 years old is because everything we do is really backed by research. We do a lot of research, whether it's through the form of focus groups, surveying, bulletin board, also interviews with actual families and providers who are working with military families to understand, like, 
here's a need like caregiving. You know, we know caregiving is something that's happening more and more. How do we support these silent heroes? And then also, what's the role of the child? We synthesize all of that information and we take it back to our teams. And we're like, okay, this is what we heard. I'll give a great example with caregiving is that from all of the research that we heard, we needed to explain caregiving, particularly right here when you're thinking about like a TBI or PTSD. How do you explain that to a four-year-old? It's really hard. And kids are so concrete. We came up with this concept around using the weather. Caregiving is not something that just happens. It's a journey for that family, and it's a long journey. And in that journey, sometimes there's really great days for that family. Sometimes it's a little cloudy, you know. The parent who's injured may not be feeling that great, and the whole family is really experiencing that. And then, sadly, there's some days that are just really, really stormy. You know, and kids know that and kids feel that. But using that sort of concept with kids can help them really understand better what's going on and to also know that, you know, there's stormy days, but there's sunny days that are coming as well. Do you have any other resources? And you may have already discussed it, but I just want to make sure we highlight it. Do you have any other resources you want to share with our families? I do. I do. You know, we also have Sesame Street in communities.org and we have our own acronym again. It's SSIC.org. And there, what your families can find is a suite of so many, like thousands of additional resources. So everything I've talked about for military, but so much more. Um, everything from talking about routines, ABCs, health, you know, even tough things like incarceration, divorce, parental addiction. So this site was really created to really support all families, um, not just military, but every family have any sort of transition, hard discussion, anything that they're going through. And similar to SS for MF, it's also by topic. And similar, there's all these suite of multimedia resources, but so many more also. And I just wanted families to know about that because, you know, especially with COVID, Thea, you mentioned the racial justice work. That's where those sort of resources live. You know, how do you want to talk to kids if you do about race when they're five? In our research, we know a lot of families are having that conversation. So we want to make sure they're equipped with the right tools that we have, um, especially because everything there is also free. It's bilingual and it's there. So we want to make sure everyone knows that it's there for them. You know, I love Sesame. <laughs> so, Sabrina, it is always great talking with you. And I hate to wrap up our conversation, but as we do wrap up the podcast, do you have any last words for our listeners? Just thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for protecting all of us and serving. I got to work on amazing projects at Sesame around the world. And this initiative is just so close to my heart, especially when I get to meet such amazing families work with such amazing organizations. It's a life of service. And, you know, I hope and I wish that all civilians understand the great sacrifices military families make, not just the service member. And that's important. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of your listeners. I think that's all. That's the most important thing I can say. And we thank you as well. And such a well put clothing for you. <laughs> Well, our time has come to an end to close this Family Voices podcast. Sabrina, I would like to thank you on behalf of AUSA, myself, and for all of your support and for being such an awesome guest. Thank you, Theo. It's so wonderful to be here. And again, congratulations and happy anniversary to 15 years of supporting our military family. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. The Army Matters podcast series is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army, the U.S. Army's professional association, member-supported, Army-connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission to educate, inform, and connect with the total Army, our industry partners, and our supporters of a strong national defense. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Have a great Army Day. Hooah.